Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to talk a little bit about the differences between Inkscape and GIMP, or the GNU Image Manipulation Program, uh, and talk about uh, which you should use in which cases and why that is. So the TLDR for this video is that if you are designing any kind of logo or graphic that you want to be able to scale up to any size in general, um, such as a company logo, which might go on a piece of paper, but might also go on a giant billboard, then Inkscape is going to be the program to use. Um, while if you need more advanced tools or you only need the image to be one specific size and you want to be able to affect each pixel individually using things like the blur and sharpen tool, the smudge tool, um, and basically being able to do photo editing in general, then you should use GIMP instead. So the reason for this is that GIMP, uh, as an image program, uh, edits the data at the pixel level for everything you see, whereas in Inkscape, it's a vector-based program. So how it's actually showing you the graphics is through mathematical calculations. And the size of the canvas actually does not matter inside of Inkscape because whatever you design here can be scaled up to any size at any point in time. So, for instance, if I go select this um, kind of shape I've drawn, which is using mathematical calculation to get here, to get here, to get here, we can scale that any direction, any size, to as big as we want it to be. And it's never going to lose any of its uh, image quality. It's always using mathematics in order to calculate, so it can always just take the vectors, or the math, um, and scale that to any size you need, which means it can go on a billboard just as easily as your logo or other graphic can go on a print out piece of paper or something like that. But then in GIMP, um, it's going to struggle a lot more to scale things. So you see this image here? If I scale this to, let's say, 10 times as big as it is right now, we're going to get issues. So we'll go ahead and try scaling that. Okay, that might have been a little bit too much, so we'll have to wait here a minute. Uh, but what will happen, or should happen, is that the image will get distorted way out of uh, its original quality uh, because it doesn't actually have any data to fill in those gaps between the pixels. Um, I think anti-aliasing or something like that helps a little bit, but um, because everything in GIMP is pixel by pixel, um, it doesn't have the data to fill in those areas, so it's going to scale it very poorly. Okay, you can see what I'm talking about now. So it didn't have the data to really fill in these gaps and there's 10 times as many pixels now, so the image quality just gets really bad. That would not happen if you had actually designed a graphic inside of GIMP. Now, any image that you pull up uh, off the web and start editing, like a JPEG or a PNG, it's going to have uh, basically the same problem, where it's hard for it to scale outside of its original size uh, because it's already been exported out of a program like GIMP or like um, Inkscape. So they can both export to PNG or that kind of thing. But if you want to be able to keep scaling it to basically maintain those vectors, uh, the Inkscape file has to be saved as an Inkscape file. Because um, once you export it to an image like a PNG, it's going to lose all of that data because that's when it just turns into pixel by pixel. Um, now, obviously, in GIMP, you're going to have those extra tools like Smudge, like Blur and Sharpen, these tools that are good for editing photos um, that work at a pixel level that Inkscape just doesn't have. But if you need something or a logo, basically, to go up to any size, then uh, that's when you would use Inkscape. When you need those vectors, you need the scalability to put it on any graphic. Uh, whereas in GIMP, if you're just editing a photo or you only need it to be one size, this is probably gonna be the program you wanna go with. So hopefully in this video, I've kind of compared those nicely and you can figure out based on that information what you need is and which program you want to go with. They're both free to use, so there's absolutely no reason not to just have both installed on in your computer to use at any time. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching this video, and I will see you guys in my future video content.